السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Welcome to all the viewers wherever you are New Zealand, UK, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia or in any of the African countries uh, Welcome to you all Inshallah we have uh, Sheikh Baba with me today um, The program today is on Ramadan question and answers so alhamdulillah, we have Sheikh Baba here. So if you have any questions about Ramadan, about the rulings of Ramadan, or any questions that you are uncertain of, uh, please do put your questions in the comments, and then we will we'll try to go there one by one, inshallah. Uh, <clears throat> but I'll start the um, uh, program today, inshallah, with the recitation of the Quran um, that talks about the fasting of the Ramadan. A'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شحر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ وَمَا كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعَسْرَ وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ <تصفيق> O oh, believers, fasting is prescribed for you as it, is, as it was for those before you. So perhaps you will become mindful of Allah. Um, and Shaykh, please, uh, inshallah, I will get Shaykh Baba to also discuss these uh, verses as well, inshallah. Ayyama ma'adudat, fast a prescribed number of days. But whoever of you is ill or on a journey, then let them fast an equal number of days after Ramadan. For those who can only fast with extreme difficulty, compensation for those who can only fast with extreme difficulty, uh, compensation can be made by feeding a needy person for every day not fasted. But whoever volunteers to give more, it is better for them. And to fast is better for you if only you knew. Uh, Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed as a guide for humanity with clear proofs of guidance and the standard to distinguish between right and wrong. So whoever is present this month, let them fast. But whoever is ill or on a journey, then let them fast an equal number of days after Ramadan. Allah intends ease for you, not hardship, so that you may complete the prescribed period and pro proclaim the greatness of Allah for guiding you. And perhaps you will be grateful. So subhanallah, um, our religion, religion of Islam, it's very clear. And it's very simple. And as Allah says in that verse itself, in the, in the, the last verse that I've recited, that the, the fasting, it's not to burden us. So alhamdulillah. So <clears throat> Sheikh, uh, first and foremost, uh, welcome to you first. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu wa barakatuhu wa barakatuhu wa barakatuhu wa barakatuhu Alhamdulillahi wa barakatuhu 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 wa so that we can worship him more and get even more closer to him. Amen. Amen. So, Sheikh, I haven't seen any questions yet from many of our viewers, but I'll yeah. start with the, there's a few questions that I've received offline. Yeah. So I'll start with that first. Yeah. The first question is, uh, Sheikh, we hear this, um, people, 
uh, recite these du'as for the, you know, in the last month or so. Um, uh, people recited and say this is a hadith. Um, the, the du'a goes like this. Uh, um, Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa balighna ramadan. So, um, Shaykh, are you able to uh, just clarify a little bit, Shaykh? Is this du'a that the Prophet taught us to do? Or is this something that, um, that there is no uh, source from there? Or, or uh, you know? And, and, or what, what should we do? What kind of du'a that we should do now? <clears throat> MashaAllah, barakallah, fiqh, brother, Dr. Fredos. Jazakallah khairan, wa hayyak, wa bayyak, amin. A very important uh, question. And that is for our deen, we have to take our source from the Quran and from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. To the best of my knowledge, my knowledge is very limited though. However, this hadith is not authentic and people should not be utilizing it regardless of who said it because Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala said Everyone's opinion can be taken and be left out with the exception of the person buried here. And he pointed the finger to the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And um, to say this is a dua, this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have done. We have to, or the companion have done. We have to have a authentic Evidence supporting that, otherwise we shouldn't be even calling it hadith, because when you say hadith, it's, it's either Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it, or he did it, or the, or taqrir, or the companions did it, as he said, alaykum sunnati wa sunnatul khulafai rashidin al mahdiyin min baadi. Follow my sunnah and the sunnah of the of my companion who are guided. Yeah. So yeah. Allah Mustan. Jazakallah khairan shaykh. So, um, uh, uh, that's that's clear. I think that's very, very clear. And the um, next question, shaykh. Um, I mean, I think we talk about the how to prepare ourselves for Ramadan. Um, oh, if you could just a little bit, you know, uh, give a, um, uh, until we got more questions to come. Yeah. Uh, whether if you can just a little bit talk about uh, the basics of the uh, of the fasting itself, uh, um, just to remind everyone of us here today, and for those who are not Muslim, for example, if they are watching this, at least they know a little bit about fasting. Yeah. Um, because there are many ways of fasting these days. Yeah. Um, the, you know, you just fast water, fast food, you know, certain things. Oh, how do we Muslims fast? Uh, Fadl Yashe, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We Muslim, we fast as Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have taught us. First of all, fasting is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do it. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so. And why Allah have said so? Because it is good for us. Why it is good for us? Allah created us and he knows what is good for us. And we see in the verses you recited, mashallah, tabarakallah, Allah is telling us is that uh, the fasting, it is just very few days, ayyaman ma'adudat. He said, kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum. Fasting have been made obligated on you as it was made obligatory on others. But this indicates what, what, what he's telling is that this, we are not the first ummah, we are not the first nation doing this. This is one. This shows the tawheed and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How all the messengers, they all have come with, with a single message. And that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is one. Secondly, when Allah said, as it was prescribed on those before you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, ayyamun ma'adu, that is a counted number of days. It is not whole year. It is not six months. It is not one whole year or ten years continuous fasting. All this is to prepare us and to train us. And why do we fast? To attain piety. And the piety here, the taqwa mentioned here, is being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always. You see, we can pray in front of people for people to see us doing that. And uh, 
But a person, if he is not mindful of Allah, he or she might go and eat and come in front of the people and pretend they are fasting. So when we fast, we attain mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have also made some rules about it. Not everyone can fast. Those who are sick or those who are in a journey, they are exempted. Those who are sick, there are two types of Ill illness. An illness that can be cured, those they eat and then they pay back later on. And the illness that is, temp that is permanent for those, Allah have made exemption for them, for them to feed a fasting person every day of the month of Ramadan. It is either 29 days or 30 days. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat, he said, Allah want easiness for us. He doesn't want burden on us. He doesn't want hardship for us. This shows how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us, telling us what, how to worship him. And we see straight away after these verses, what did Allah say? If my slaves ask you about me, tell them I'm nearer and I can hear them and ask them. There's nothing better than asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after having worshipped him in the manner that he has ordered us to do and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have delivered it accordingly. Jazakallah khairan we got a few questions here and I'll start with the, one of the questions from uh, brother Yaqub Usman from Oman. Yeah. Um, um, uh, so just bring up his question now. Yeah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh, my dear brother. I'm from Oman. My question is, I have asthma. Does taking inhalers breaks fast? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh, brother Yaqub Usman. I pray we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to kill you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you shifa and speedy recovery. And to all those Muslims who are suffering anywhere in the globe, I mean, and this, inshallah, you take you taking the base inhaler, it won't break your fast, inshallah, because it is not feeding you anything. Wallahu alam. Okay, and I think the second question from brother. And uh, sorry, brother, for this before yes. I go from the professional side, you can. Add to my comment on that too, please. I think that's uh, that's very clear as well. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we can uh, um, we add share sure, and some of us in New Zealand they're still uh, waiting to get their uh, uh, booster vaccine, for example. Yeah. And they might be due for booster vaccine during Ramadan. Yeah. What will be your um, <clears throat> the answer to that? Uh, are we yeah. do we delay further or do we go ahead get and get the um, uh, booster vaccine for the COVID? Inshallah. Yeah. No, inshallah, when the Islamic view for that is that uh, you go and you take your vaccine, not just for the booster, if you haven't done yours yet, go and take it now. And also if you have got other injections, so long those injections are not feeding you, then it doesn't break your fast, it doesn't invalidate your fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam. Even taking out a tooth, it, would, it doesn't break one's fasting. Even if one's had a bleeding nose, it doesn't break one's fast. Wallahu alam. Okay. Um, I, I think I had a question uh, for you, Sheikh, before. Yeah. Um, but those who are from Malaysia probably uh, know this. Uh, yeah. We used to say that when we grow up that, you know, you're not allowed to shower in, in, in Ramadan because if you shower <laughs> while you're fasting, it will break your fast. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of this before, but this is what we used, I used to hear when I was growing up. So we were, we were told not to have shower or the shower is makru uh, or something along that line. So, Sheikh, can you just explain this for us, Inshallah? <laughs> inshallah, this, uh, I used to hear this too and we used to, we are taught this long ages ago in Africa, in West Africa, Precisely in Sierra Leone, to say that if you are fasting, you cannot have a shower. No, that is wrong. Having a shower during the month of Ramadan, you know, like the Jew, 
like Yom al you know, and all that. It doesn't break the fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam. Now, there's one of the questions from Brother uh, Abdul Qayyum. Yeah. Known. Yeah. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brother. I'm from Indian occupied Kashmir. My question is, it is, is, is it necessary for a Sikh to remain fast <coughs> during the month of Ramadan if his health conditions become worse by fasting? Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh for the Abdul Qayyum loan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease the suffering of our brothers in Kashmir and anywhere around the world and also to ease the sufferings of the people of Ukraine. Amin. Amin. If someone is uh, very sick, then they should, if they are able to fast with the sickness, that is fine. If they are not, and according to your question, if the uh, illness is getting worse, then they shouldn't be fasting. Even if a person is in a journey and he is fasting, if it becomes very, very difficult, then he, he or she shouldn't be fasting. We know the hadith when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was in a journey and people complained that, uh, you know, the journey is getting tough on them and also with the fasting. So they break, he break, he broke his fast. And when he got told there are other people who are fasting, he said about them, Ulaika humul usat, ulaika humul usat. Those are the, those are the disobedience, those are the disobedience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have made this day easy. Allah doesn't want to burden us. So we shouldn't take this to a level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not. We have to remember that uh, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man ahdasa fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fahuwa rad. Whosoever, whosoever invent in this day what is not part of it, it will be thrown into that person's, into that person's face. So if one is sick and the health condition is not improving, they shouldn't be fasting. Even if they are not in a journey, let alone if they are in a journey. Even if they are in peace, let alone if their country is being invaded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam. Allah knows best. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. Um, one of the sisters, Sister Laila, yeah. I'll put up her questions here. Yeah. Um, she asked, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, yes. sister. Uh, if we only perform eight raka'ah of taraweh instead yeah. of 20 yeah. following the masjid, I assume um, you went to a mosque that usually do 20 raka'ah. Yeah. But you chose to do only eight raka'ah. So I presume that's what, happened, that's what your question is. Is it appropriate to perform three raka'ah witir while the imam and the jama'ah are still continuing with the taraweh? So I assume the question is about um, you were in the masjid that normally do 20 raka'ah. For whatever reason you chose to do only eight and so you go and follow the imam for the whole eight rakah and when the imam continue with your nine and ten rakah is she allowed to you know go some go in the corner of the masjid and then maybe uh, do three rakah for her witir separately while the imam still continuing with their prayers <clears throat> Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh, sister Layla. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you immensely for your valid question. Amen. In this, if you are doing that following the hadith of Aisha, when she mentioned in Sahih Bukhari that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that what he offered, if you are doing that, it is better. Offering the witr in the masjid is good, but to get more reward, it is better to offer them at home. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have said that Do not take your homes as graveyards. So what the scholars of Hadith, how they interpreted this Hadith is that all the Nawafil or what we call Sunan, they are more, we get more reward when we offer them at home. However, for some reason, if uh, I'm in a situation that uh, from the masjid I'll be going to work or um, I'll be going to somewhere else, then inshallah offering the witr um, in, in one of the corners, nothing wrong with that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam. Now. 
Jazakallah uh, khairan Shaykh. Um, there's a question here from, uh, uh, I think from the sister in from Malaysia. Yeah. I'll bring up the question inshallah. I think, uh, yes. Um, uh, Assalamu alaikum Shaykh. Um, can a Muslim traveler skip their fasting when traveling to another country when actually they are on vacation for 10 days? <laughs> Not sure why 10 days. I presume it could be 10 days, it could be 5 days, it could be 7 days, it could be 20 days. Um, you know, however, when you're on vacation for 10 days, what would be your, um, uh, what would be your answer, Shah? Go ahead, Shah. Um, the, mashallah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin, jazakallah khairan sister, yati tahir, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and your families immensely. Amin. The ayah of the Quran and the authentic son of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says it perfectly. That if we are in a journey, we have the option. If we are able to fast with the struggle in the journey to fast, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Because with that, we are fasting with the people who are fasting and we don't have the worry of repaying back. This is one. Secondly, if it is a vacation, unless it is going for, say, for example, for Umrah, then. Visiting family? Uh, yeah, Umrah or visiting families. So if it is a visiting families, let's call it a Ziyaratul Aqarib. When we hear vacation, we think, okay, people are going for... <laughs> True. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So if people are going to visit uh, families, it is best they fast if they are able to. If they are not able to, then they can eat and then pay back later on. But uh, remember, Fasting with the group when they are fasting, if one is able to, is the best choice for one to do. For the reasons we mentioned before, I just want to repeat them again. One, that is fasting with the people. Secondly, you don't have the worry of the paying back. Thirdly, if you are visiting families, they will be, you know, they might be concerned or worried, or no, sorry, I take that back. They might not be worried, but it might keep them occupied making food for you during the day for you to eat and they are not eating. So going with them in the fasting will be the best option. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam. However, if one is not able to fast, then they can eat and then pay back later as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah. Allah alam. Allah knows best. Um, there's one question here. I'll type yeah. some. Uh, uh, I'm typing in. Actually, there's one more question here that um, I'll put this one. There's one other question that came offline to me earlier. Yeah. Um, this is a very common thing that we hear again and again and again. Yeah. Uh, the question says, I heard Ramadan is divided into three parts. Yeah. The first 10 days of it are mercy. The second 10 days are forgiveness and the third day is a ransom from the fire it is said yeah. that there are specific dua for each part yeah is this correct is this something that definitely um the prophet have said or is this something that um you know there's no specific things but rather we should just keep making dua through and through throughout the ramadan uh, go ahead share yeah this is to say the month is divided into three parts and the first day is messy as it is described in the in this sual in this question that is not authentic. It is not authentic. What we know is authentic is the hadith Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. When she asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, what should I say when it's come for Laylatul Qadr? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her to say, Quli, Allahumma inna ka'afu'un tuhibbun afu'a, fa'afu'anni. Allah, you are forgiver, you are generous, forgive me. This is what we are to say during the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. Because as we know, with the different opinions from the scholars, that Laylatul uh, Qadr, those who say it is on the 27th or the 26th or the old numbers, if we were to continually say this in the last 10 days, we will be attaining the Laylatul Qadr, inshallah. And we will get the reward as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us this through Aisha radiallahu taala anha. Allah subhanahu wa taala alam. Jazakallah khairan, Shah. Um, one of the question that came from sister 
to me before. Yeah. Um, the question is, um, uh, sure, I, I'm pregnant this year, so yeah. I get tired and sick. Yeah. And later I have to breastfeed. Yeah. And and not, I presume I, I usually get tired too. Yeah. I don't think I will have time to make up the fast uh, before the next Ramadan started. So, <clears throat> so maybe you can um, discuss a little bit more about this uh, question, Sheh. Yeah. Uh, I, I presume, you know, a sister, if they got pregnant, they're pregnant for nine months. And some sisters will have uh, much more struggle to fast. And especially uh, for those that live in the, uh, at the moment in New Zealand, it's still not too bad, but we are coming to fasting in summer can be quite long. And they can get quite dehydrated, not having enough water, etc., etc. So they can get quite tired from that. And I, I guess the sister said, you know, once you're pregnant for nine months, and then when baby comes, you have to breastfeed. And again, some will get tired as well because you know they have to continuously, you know, looking after the young baby, young child, toddler, and you know, and uh, breastfeeding, and that can be very difficult to make up the fast <clears throat> for the next Ramadan. Yeah. So, what's your suggestion, and how do we deal with this subject here? Yeah. <laughs> First of all, uh, it is it is not my suggestion. It is the Islamic suggestion. It is Islamic view. First of all, sister, I say I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to grant you blessed child, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make your pregnancy go well and delivery go well. Amen. May Allah grant you a pious child. Now, for those sisters who are pregnant, a fasting will cause or will endanger the life of the baby or their lives, then they shouldn't be fasting. They should eat and pay back later on. Those who are breastfeeding, because they are not eating, they won't be able to produce enough milk to breastfeed the baby. They should eat and try and pay back later on. My, sorry, the Islamic advice is that uh, we have to plan the life so that the pregnancy and feeding doesn't impact on the ibadah, doesn't impact on us fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is when I say planning, I mean by that organizing ourselves in a way that we make sure that uh, we are strong. I'm not underestimating here what the question is, but we make sure that we are strong and we make ourselves feel strong so that when our heart and our Iman is strong, even if we are weak in our body, when the Iman is strong, we'll be able to fast and pay back some of these days, in fact, when we are paying back, it doesn't have to be continually, continuously. One should be able to pay maybe weekends or plan for days that you are less busy to be able to repay back than having to wait for next year to come because one never know, am I going to live till next year? And we should be worried of um, having to part this world with owing fasting or giving zakat or any form of ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam. From the professional side, uh, brother Dr. Fredaus, what is the doctor's view on this? Um, well, I guess yeah, the, the, the answer to it, like you say, if you plan early on, you might be able to still make up the fast. Yeah. And um, But I, I assume there might be you know, some sisters who are still struggling because uh, it, it, especially if they're first time baby, or they have quite a few children or what, or what not, you know, that might be the reasons why they were not able to, despite the plan, they might not be able to still make up the fast. What could they do, Shah, if they're still having troubles with that? Because I, I, you know, I, I think you've got a very good point. If you try to plan, a, you know, if you are in New Zealand, for example, you know, you can try to pay back your fasting in, in winter, which you know is shorter, uh, and uh, maybe that would be better for you. You know, you can still do that. But if you are not able to do that, share because you know you have some sort of illnesses, or um, uh, you know you're just exhausted because you don't get the help because you got other other responsibilities. Um, can they feed fidya, fidya, uh, fidya, for example, share? 
On that, on that they should give the it'am, the iftar sign. On that, based on what you have said, they should feed a fasting, a person per day. Allahu alam. Okay, now I think that's uh, that's that's clear, inshallah. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, one more question here from uh, Sister Laila Majid. Uh, yeah. she's, she's asked, um, are we getting the same reward if we perform taraweh at home with the husband as my imam comparing to performing taraweh at the masjid? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Another very interesting and valid question, Sister. It is, uh, there's a hadith uh, that for the sisters, it is better they pray at home. Now, if one prays at home with the husband as an imam, inshallah, the reward for the taraweeh, the reward is even greater, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam. So I guess that the question, the reason for that question, Shah, you know, yeah. um, you know, you got 27 rewards. So some people might think, you know, if you go to for or fad, you know, the um, Fajr, Zuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and Isha, you will get yeah. 27 times. Yeah. So some people assume that if you do Taraweh at the Masjid, you might get the same. Or, you know, or is it better to be at home with the, and then actually get the whole family, the whole children, kids, and, and get it to it, and then do the Taraweh together? <clears throat> For, we cannot compare the Taraweh with the Fard Salat, with the obligatory Salat. The reward of praying at home for men is for it will be less if they if we offer them at home. But for the tarawi, that cannot be compared with the fard. The tarawi, one is able to pray the fard salat, isha salat in the masjid, even offer two or four rakat and then come home and then again lead the whole family in the tarawi, offer the tarawi or witr or qiyam al layl at home. Nothing wrong with that, and inshallah, one will be rewarded for that. And if sisters do that, based on the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he says it is better for them, then they get more reward. Allahu alam. Okay. Um, one other question come to my phone here is, um, is it is it safe, or I presume is it is it better to delay? Uh, breaking the fast um, in Ramadan um, just to be safe to make sure that you know we have uh, you know uh, you know let's say I think these days we all have timetable everywhere where you know we've got mobile phone and you know and we got apps that calculate the time wherever you are yeah, even you know, in a slight angle you know different calculations so we've got everything here so the question is I guess the 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 brother was asking is do we better to delay a little bit to break the fast by five, ten minutes just to be sure? Or, you know, we do what we normally follow, what we follow uh, on our phone or on the calendar that the uh, masjid gave out to us and just break the fast on time as soon as the time is, is, is up. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallah khairan. Brother, the best is that uh, as soon the time is up, we have to break our fast because... This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and it is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has delivered the message. So to prolong it and say just to be on the safe side, I'll delay it for another 10 minutes. The fasting, it is not at night. Fasting for Muslims is during the days. It's from, min, from 12 Fajr ila Ghulub shams until the sun sets. As soon as the sun sets, the time is up, one is to break his fast. Even if you don't have something with you to eat, just say the dua that we say before we break our fast, and then you swallow anything. And with that, you'll be out of the fasting. Yeah. Allahu Alam. Jazakallah khairan. I guess the uh, on, on addition to that would be uh, what about when we, um, how, when do we stop eating? And um, I know this, for example, in, in Malaysia, we, you know, in Ramadan, you, you were told when we're growing up, 10 minutes before, you get to stop eating. And, you know, you stop eating, you're not allowed to eat. 
10 minutes before the, the prayer time started. So are we able to continue that or is there such a thing or we are allowed to eat all the way up until the um, the azan is heard? No, not until the azan is heard. <laughs> Um, it is uh, when it's come for suhoor we are to eat our suhoor to the closer to the last minute how closer that is for example for New Zealand here for example if we were say for the argument's sake we were in Ramadan we know looking at the time it says Fajr starts 5.45 for example if yeah. that is the case, one should be able to eat until 5.30. By then stops eating and then goes and brush the teeth and then makes wudu and then by the time you get to this and then take one last sip if you want to drink, then that should be enough. But to delay it until you hear the adhan, that, that would be wrong. One last one out of the Allah space. So if we wake up five minutes before uh, Fajr Sheikh, we haven't eaten anything, we wake up late, get the alarm, does it go off? Can we quickly go and get a few dates and, and have the food, uh, have the drink? <clears throat> yeah, yes, but just be careful so that uh, you don't choke yourself. Allah <laughs> 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 um, Let me see <laughs> if there is any more questions coming through. <clears throat> Okay, and I think the uh, that's fine. I think we've got all the answers there. Um, I guess yeah, one question, uh, um, uh, just a reflection from you, Sheikh. I just want to hear from you. How, what do you think about it? Is yeah, uh, you know, when I recently I went to um, I give a talk to you know, uh, people who are not Muslims, and then they yeah. were asking about, um, uh, <laughs> Uh, um, uh, they were asking about, mm. um, I mean, children, at what age do we get our children to fast? And, you know, because most people think, you know, this is a painful, it's a starvation, you know. Mm. And, you know, at what age do we, we recommend our children to start fasting? Mm. Uh, the age that is recommended for children to start fasting, if we follow the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, Muru abnaakum bi salati li sabin, utribum alayha bi ashrin, wa farriqu baynam fil madaji, is that uh, we are to order our children to pray at the age of seven, and then at the age of ten, then we, la we discipline them, and we separate between boys and girls' bedrooms. Now, based on that, if children, they can start learning and training how to fast by following us. Say they start with fasting half a day. They go to one day or they start fasting a couple of hours, just a few hours. So they train gradually. They are able to fast. That age of here, it is said for boys age of 13 or until a person attains age of puberty. But starting to train them when they are very young, starting at the age of seven, gradually, that is absolutely is the key to learning. Oh, oh. What, at what age do you remember you start fasting, Chair? <laughs> Um, I can't remember, honestly. I can't remember. Oh, you can't? Okay, okay. <laughs> I, can't I think um, growing up in Malaysia, because, yeah. you know, uh, being where the Muslim majority, yeah. uh, especially at school, uh, yeah. especially in my hometown, yeah. um, you know, we started fasting from uh, primary school. Primary school started at the age of seven. Mashallah, um, mashallah. And that's, you know, because everybody fast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. It's just, it just a lot absolutely. easier, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, there will be absolutely. no... Uh, kitchen available there, there wasn't compulsory like you know there's some kids who are not able to fast they will bring their own food and things like yeah, that yeah but yeah. majority of us you know our parents say oh, look it's it's ramadan just fast as well so we, yeah. we just started fasting 
and subhanallah i don't remember that uh, i don't remember that we have any difficulty or or hardship especially because the whole families are doing it yeah and and i think that's the key here like you said if everybody is around you are doing it and then you are you encourage your kids to do it from early on absolutely and, uh, and, and inshallah alhamdulillah you know that yeah. would be easy yeah, I know kids, yeah, yeah. I know when I was uh, growing up, we used to challenge ourselves uh, with others, you know, we used to compete, oh, I have got five days, oh, I have got ten days, I have got these days. Yes, Allah yes, Allah yes. Allah yes. Allah. I yeah. think my, when I first started fasting, it's only half a day from breakfast until lunch, <laughs> and that's uh, yeah. for some reason. Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> the second year, yeah, <laughs> but the second year was from the whole day, alhamdulillah, yeah. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah, that's, you know, subhanAllah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, one of the questions here, I think, is a joking question, Sheikh. Um, yeah. Uh, at what age it's considered old for eat money? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see this I come from Fatima, mashallah. <laughs> it, uh, there is a no, Fatima, you are not too old for eat money. That is one. Secondly, um, there is no limit of age for receiving Eid money and also <laughs> if you want to if you want to give to the older ones too so yeah so we too we are ready to to accept it so there's no limit inshallah so so we long, parents we should be we should be expecting our kids to give us eight money to Hasha. Yeah? <laughs> yes 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 we should <laughs> now, uh, there's one question that just come through yeah um uh vomiting right so yeah. do we and let me just put the question down here first yeah uh, vomit so the question is yeah um vomiting do we break our fast uh, <clears throat> i mean if we were to vomit yeah um does our fast broken for example <clears throat> if for some reason i i intentionally make myself to vomit say for example i put my hand in my throat just for the sake of vomiting i do that willingly knowingly then that breaks my fast but if i just vomit then it doesn't break the fast it doesn't break the wudu either if i'm in wudu okay yeah all right just like allah i think that's very um common question as well people yeah. assume that if you're sick you vomit and then that's it your fast broken yeah and i no. think you already mentioned before that uh nose bleeding uh yeah. didn't break your fast no it doesn't and um, one question here you know what yeah. if we chose to donate blood mm -hmm. during ramadan will that break our fast no it doesn't inshallah it doesn't but do you, you get um Tired share when you donate blood in Ramadan. So I guess the ruling is it doesn't break your fast. Yeah. Uh, but but then probably not recommended because yes. you, you do get tired from uh donating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that is correct. It doesn't it doesn't break fast. However, it is recommended if you are blood donor, you do it before Ramadan or after Ramadan. But if you are to do it during the Ramadan, maybe you are putting yourself at risk of dehydration or feeling dizziness. Wallahu alam. Okay, now one question here yeah. is uh, what type of uh, charity should we give out in Ramadan? Is there any specific charities better than others in Ramadan or any form of charity that we should increase a lot more in Ramadan? Any form of charity and we should increase more in Ramadan because the Hadith Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that uh, described Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he was always generous and he was more generous in Ramadan. And he was more generous in Ramadan. So try to not just stick into one form of charity, try doing other different charitable acts that will increase our iman and will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu alam. Uh, Jazakallah khairan, Shah. Um, 
I'm just going to collect to see if I, I'm going to check a few other places to check for more questions here. Yeah. Um, but are you maybe able to... Um, uh, people always ask this question about reciting the Quran in Ramadan. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and ha what would be the best way? You know, a lot of us try to uh, finish the recitation, the whole Quran in Ramadan. Yeah. Um, what would be the best way to do it? Do we do it in a, um, you know, we just try to race ourselves and get it done quickly? Or do we um, take our time a little bit, do a bit more reflection on the on the Quran that we may not be able to finish the whole thing? What would be your, your recommendation about reflecting on Quran in Ramadan? <clears throat> Reflecting on the Quran in Ramadan first is Allah said that uh, the month of Ramadan is the month that the Quran was revealed. Is uh, reciting, trying to recite the Quran with a translation that will uh, increase our understanding of the meaning and trying to apply what we recite and what we learn in our daily life and also trying to make it as a habit for preparing ourselves. If we are Monday to Fridays, we are not able to, but we can, we should be able to, or days that we are not working, we should be able to, to go to the masjid half an hour early, reading the Quran slowly and not to read it as in competition, just to finish it just for the sake of, oh, I finished it in one week. I finished it in the first week or in the first 10 days, or I finished it in three days. No, we try to recite it in a very beautiful way in the masjid or at home, or at home. Doing so, we're training ourselves to be friend of the Quran and remembering, taking every day of the Ramadan, okay, this will be my last day. How about if this is the last day of Ramadan for me in my life? How do I want to meet my Creator? When you put this in your mind, then you recite as much, as many pages as possible and understanding the meaning and trying to reflect if they are about stories of Allah's punishment, crying to Allah and asking to prevent you from and save you from his punishment. If it is verses that are mentioning about um, Jannah and about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, and asking Him to make you among those who will make it to Jannah. Those who will see His face in Jannah, 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 Amen. Allahu Alam. Jazakallah khairan, Shaykh. Um, I think, we, we, subhanAllah, we've done about, um, we're almost 50 minutes now into the program. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's 9 o'clock now um, yeah. in New Zealand, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think uh, we'll end the program here, share, but I get you to just give, um, uh, you know, maybe five minutes words and to close the program, just any more nasiha for yeah. Ramadan. Yeah. For all of us, especially, you know, inshallah, with three more weeks to go, I'm looking here, the moon is, um, you know, exactly half here at the moment. So three more weeks, I think two to three more weeks, inshallah. Yeah. Um, actually, there was one, um, uh, one question here. Let me just yeah. go through first. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't quite understand. So, Sister um, Mary, if you yeah. are watching this, um, she, the question is, the sanctity of Quran is revealed in the month of Ramadan, who and how? So, I'm not quite sure what the question is. So, Sister Mary, if you able to reword your questions, um, and if I can understand that, inshallah, we'll get uh, Shah to answer that. Inshallah. But I'll get Shah to just give a five-minute advice, a talk, a reminder. Uh, you know, we are coming to Ramadan, inshallah. If you could do that, Sheikh, and then I will we'll go back to this question if we have to, if we if we if we are able to, inshallah. Yeah. Fadal, yeah. Barakallah fi jazakallah khairan. As we were saying before, we need to prepare ourselves. To prepare ourselves for Ramadan, we need to start now. For example, if you are able to fast Mondays and Thursdays of Sha'aban, that will be fine. That will be a training start for you. Or 13 and 14 or 15. Also, that will be a training for you. And also, getting ready for it. Though it is three weeks, there is no guarantee we'll be alive come Ramadan. But having the intention and having the eager of welcoming 
this blessed guest is should be every Muslim's responsibility to do so because by so doing remember when we are fasting we are more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the habit the bad habit we have like smokers during the day they don't smoke they should take that and say okay if I can do this in Ramadan I should be able to do it out of Ramadan and uh, always remembering oh I'm fasting Ghibat is haram, backbiting is haram. Oh, I'm fasting. I have to have at least half a juzu or one juzu of reading the Quran or grabbing Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim or Sunan al-Nasai or Abu Dawud or any book of the Ahadith, grabbing them and reciting them and learning every day, trying to learn something new. And also, if you are able to donate every day of the month of Ramadan, every day, one single dollar without without underestimating the dollar to say no it is too little i'm not going to do it it is too little the dollar won't feed anything it doesn't give him it doesn't even get you a half a petrol of you know a half a liter of petrol no don't see it that way it is the intention it is the intention, it is the intention. If the intention is sincere, the one who is donating that day a dollar is better than the one who is donating 100 or 50 dollars or a thousand if he or she is doing it for the sake for people to talk about it or for seeking fame. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam. Um, I think that's the uh, the program, Sheikh. Um, yep. Sister hasn't uh, reworded her questions. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah I think if you are free, uh, next Friday we can go through this because there are other questions, say, for example, about if I mean, say, I start my fasting in New Zealand, then I travel during Ramadan, say, for example, oh, well. in Melbourne, in Australia, or sisters who want to who want to take some pills or injections so that to avoid the monthly cycle so that they don't have to owe any day in Ramadan to be paid. Those questions and other questions, uh, we can continue this, uh, inshallah, in the next Friday, if we are free, inshallah. Inshallah, yeah, we can do that as well, inshallah, definitely. So, so those yeah. are watching now, yeah. and if you still have that questions yeah. uh, uh, about it, Please do put a comment through or email through to us, inshallah, and then we'll go through that uh, next week, inshallah. inshallah. Um, now, Brother Mustafa, Jazakallah khairan. Uh, this hadith, we actually just really discussed this before. Um, you know, this is not really a, a sahih hadith. This is a weak hadith. Um, so, I don't. there was no dua about Allah mabarik lana fi raja wa sha'ban wa balikna wa ramadan. There's no, this hadith is not uh, authentic as far as we, we, when we just discussed about this in the first part of the program. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, okay, uh, Sheikh, I know we have to go now. I know you have to go. So, inshallah, we will continue this again next week. So, if Baraka anyone who have any more questions, we can go through part two or we can do um, a different topic and just discussing this rather yeah, than just having many questions. Um, yeah. we'll, I'll select a few questions and then we'll discuss that in details, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, uh, khairan for uh, whoever's watching who be, who's been with us for the last hour or so. Uh, wherever you are and uh, from the uk from turkey from malaysia from indonesia from new zealand and from africa from bangladesh from pakistan so jazakallah khairan uh, uh, thank you for joining us and inshallah we all make dua that we will uh, be able to be in ramadan this year inshallah Amen. and and any questions uh, do drop us any comments and then we'll go from there inshallah and Jazakallah khairan, uh, Sheikh Baba, for answering those so many questions. Uh, subhanallah, there's so many questions, and if we just keep going on and on, I'm sure there are a lot more questions to, to be answered. Oh, yeah, there's a one brother, Brother Taufik, say he's from Ethiopia. So, yes, we've got a brother from Ethiopia. we got Sheikh Baba himself, he's from uh, Sierra Leone. So, um, Jazakallah khairan, uh, uh, everyone, and inshallah, we'll see you again next week. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa